and uh, oh shit, I don't know my notes. Mo- nose pulled up. Today we're we going. We don't to... need notes. Yeah, we... <laughs> where we're going, we don't need notes because it shows how True wonderfully story. professional our podcast is. We have been getting all of those comments about how professional we are and not yes, amateur, not amateurish at all. Our very first comment from someone wasn't about how amateurish and how they wrote off our podcast. No, so... it has never happened. <laughs> anyway, this week. We don't have anything to talk about. We're recording a little early because we're seeing the Avengers tomorrow because I'm dragging Kevin to go see it with me. Okay, Um, here's a good rant. 3D is terrible. I know. I apologize for my 3D. That's the only thing that was on sale. If anyone listening thinks that you legitimately get a better experience at the movies because of 3D, I will fight you with words. I don't actually (laughs) want to fight you because I don't care that much, but I will fight you with words. No, I agree. 2D is much better, but that's all they had, so sorry. Um, but Bunch of crap. <laughs> so, yeah, we don't have much to talk about, but there were a lot of albums that came out last week, so we're going to talk about those, and yeah. I guess we could just hop right into uh, my grinds. I don't, yeah, I don't have anything to yeah, say. I mean, I, Unless we, we want to talk about Marvel movies, and then we could totally... I, I don't actually want to. <laughs> I, I, I have enjoyed them, and they are a fun time, but that is as far as I'll go. Your fun time. Uh, we can remind everybody about how we saw Mike Ryan at oh, yeah. the Windy City Smokeout, For and sure. we got to talk to him because Steve talked to him, and I was afraid to talk to him. <laughs> uh, but then he was super chill and super cool, and we got a picture, and it was great. Yeah, I know we talked about this because we did... We're doing the podcast when we did this last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we talked about it after the Winnie City Smokeout. I just saw we him. You just can't cur- assume that everyone's listened to every yeah. episode. I, everyone has because we're. Every single one. Us. That's why every episode has the same number of listens. Exactly. <laughs> Luke Holmes is definitely not way more inflated than everyone else. Um, but anyway, so yeah, last year we went to the Winnie City Smokeout in Chicago, if you didn't get that from the title. Um, There's plenty of cities with wind, Steve. <laughs> every city has wind. What makes Chicago so special? <laughs> um, but, yeah, Mike Ryan was one of the guys who a little earlier in the day, but I just, we just saw him in the crowd. Like He walked out from backstage and was standing in the back while like Muscadine Bloodline or someone was playing. Yeah. And I was just like, that's Mike Ryan. And so he walked over, and I was like, are you Mike Ryan? He's like, yeah. And so we chat with him for a little bit. He was super nice, took a picture with us. Uh, he asked for the photo because we're famous. No, just kidding. We asked him for the photo. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just chatted with him for a little bit. And then he, then we saw him play, and he was amazing. So good. Because he was playing a lot of his Blink, You'll Miss It songs because yeah. that was EP was about to come out. And uh, then yeah. we saw him later in the yeah. crowd walking by. And I was just like, hey, man, good set. And he's like, oh, it's good to see you again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, honestly, he was a guy where, like, I had listened to a, a good handful of his songs prior to then, yeah. and I, I'll, you know, I enjoyed them for sure. But after seeing him live, and I feel like this happens with a lot of artists, where I'll see them live and I'll be like, oh, like, no, they fucking go, like, this is good. Yeah. And then I'll really dive into the music after the fact and yeah. be like, yes, I was right in thinking that they're good. <laughs> they jam. And so he was definitely one of those guys that I like. I don't know how many songs that I could have sang the words to at that time. But for sure, after it got done, I was like, yeah, no, I am going to dive into all of the music that he has out there. And when Blink, You Miss It comes out, I am going to be yeah. so pumped. And Blink, You Miss It was my favorite album of last year. Uh, just even though it was an it's e- an EP. Yeah, even though it was an EP, it was Liar. the one that I would listen start to finish more times than any other album. That came, oh, maybe not more times than any other album because it came out later than most, but because Sunny Sweeney's I listen to a lot also. But, yeah, no, um, I definitely listen to Tyler Childers the most. And yeah, it's not even close. Like yeah. no offense to any other artist, it's just <laughs> that like hook that album up to my veins you don't for even, the rest of my life. You don't life. even like. Tyler I've Childers. never brought it up. Never. Certainly not like almost every podcast. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so he was super nice, and then obviously he was really good live. And I remember we were genuinely laughing while he was singing uh, the rewrite for yeah. the first time. Oh, because... and it's such a beautiful song. If you, I mean, we're, we'll obviously touch on it, but yeah, uh, if you don't like just a really good "fuck you" X kind of breakup <laughs> song. You've either lived a very uh, privileged life and Jake. never <coughs> had to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm really happy for you guys. I love you guys. But also, <laughs> um, but seriously, like those kind of songs just get you feeling some type of way, and it's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. And then, yeah, it was just phenomenal. We were going to see him again. He was in Chicago a 
couple months ago opening for, I think, Randy Rogers, but I think it was a Friday concert, Mm -hmm. and we just couldn't make it home in time for it because Chicago, like, getting home is only two hours from here, so we would get home by 7-something if we left from work. But getting to Chicago, especially during rush hour, that's a three- to maybe four-hour drive. Yeah, it's it, and it's, I mean, I'm happy to be in this position now in our lives where we kind of have more music available out yeah. there that we want to see than we yeah. can actually see. I'm I'm so much happier to be in that position than to be like no one comes around. You're like literally no one, yeah. and you can't see anyone, especially with like Coon Dog Motel. Oh and fuck just, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it, you know, there's there's plenty. I mean, shit, Ray Scott's in Iowa City tonight. Damn it. Yeah, it's tonight. Damn it. Yeah, I know. Damn it. Yeah, so that sucks. Yeah, that's the one thing that does suck is a lot of because Iowa is obviously not a huge like party. What are you state. talking about? Everyone so, talks about how they come to Iowa and are just like, wow, just a bustling yeah, metropolis. We're from, really good when it's from just, end to end. Yeah, just, when it's election year, um, people do come here though. Then I yeah. was in Des Moines for work one time uh, during this past election, which most people know was very uneventful. Um, <laughs> it hasn't ruined friendships or family. And I or literally TV. like I couldn't go where I needed to go for like 45 minutes because I, I want to say it was Hillary was speaking and because of the All security right. lockdown, I literally couldn't go where I needed to go. So I just had to fucking stand there. And so like, I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna <laughs> hang out here. And then, uh, after the event ended, they all cleared out and I was able to go, but I was like, Holy And that's why Jesus. Hillary lost. Cause Kevin couldn't get where he needed to go. I was, he was the swing vote. I was the swing vote. I mean, he I was did, the I, swing vote. I didn't vote for either of them. So my swing vote didn't go anywhere, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time I swung the vote. <laughs> exactly. Um, you would have swung it into a tie, Kevin. Mm. God damn it. Um, tie harder. <laughs> Uh, but, but, but yeah, it's so yeah, that's like we went off topic there. But yeah, it's it is nice that there are more people playing out here in Iowa. But what I was saying was, it sucks that since Iowa, is, it's since it's not like a major city, they come yeah. during the week, and it's hard to get to Des Moines yeah. or Iowa City on like a Tuesday to yep. see someone. Or Cedar Rapids is a big one too. Yeah, but I I also don't want to complain too hard because I know the the Turnpike group that we're on in on Facebook. Uh, people talk about like driving four hours to see bands because there's yeah. literally no one that comes through their town. I'm like, okay, I don't, yeah, I don't have to do that. But at the same time, like, I mean, we are adults yeah. who full time podcast. That's a lie. Um, but uh, <laughs> we don't yeah. have jobs. This can't, is our job. Can't go to every show, but yeah, I, yeah. But seriously, I'm so happy to be at this point because, like I've said on the podcast before. There was a time in my life as a youngin where like I went to my first concert and it was great, and I was like. I wonder when I'll get to go to my next one. And it was like, you know, not imagining that I'll get to see shows like even once a year. And now I'm like going, fuck, I don't know how many shows we average a year now. It's ridiculous. It's at least two or three a month. Like, (laughs) yeah. We go, yeah, to our, I don't know. I, I know I've said this on the podcast before, but it reminded me of back in home economics in high school when they're like, you're learning how to balance a checkbook. And so it's like, you have to do all your expenses, like groceries and electric and no, all this. Don't. And then he goes, but you also have to take account for like fun things like concerts and stuff. And at that time I hadn't been to a concert and I was just like, I'll never go to concerts. Why would I do that? And now it's just like, I spend all of my money on concerts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of which, when is Medicine Stone on sale? Because I don't want to buy it. And also, who balances their checkbook? I, I did it. I remember when I first got it, I was balancing it for a little bit. Then I was like, I have the Chase app. And it I, I, I'm, it for me. I am an accountant, and I very quickly recognized <laughs> the stupidity of trying to sit there and balance my checkbook. Also, because I don't write checks. Yeah, I don't. I haven't written a check since... I, no, um, I genuinely don't know. I don't remember the last. I mean, time I write one once a month now for the association fees of this house, but that's literally. I it. did write one a little bit ago because I was looking for it, but I can't. I think I had to write a void one. I don't know. Anyway, um, checkbook balancing. Checkbook. We're now going to go into that topic. Po- the account podcast, Kevin. The accountant's hour. <laughs> Let me tell you about the cash flows statement. <laughs> Oh my god, that, what was the gamer tag? We were playing Fortnite yesterday. It was before genuinely you got on. Genuinely flaccid? No, genuinely flaccid <laughs> is probably the best one we've seen so far. But no, it was like it was like accounting like legend or something. I was just like, that guy's really into accounting. <laughs> As an accountant, I can confidently say, why? <laughs> yeah. Have you not enjoyed anything but, in life? And this is the this is it? 
But yeah, I think genuinely flaccid is by far the greatest. I got uh, I got killed one movie. time by a guy whose gamer tag was Creamy Spooge, and that's <laughs> that's also up there. <laughs> oh, um, that just reminded me. Cassidy uh, messaged me the other day saying, "I don't know how the <laughs> segue went off of Creamy well, Spooge." Well, it's, it's because of a stupid thing that oh. she says. <laughs> I, she says she's a fan of the podcast. So hi, hi, Cassidy. Um, Hello. But she she just goes. I just love the comment you made about Kevin eating dildos. I'm like, I don't remember making that comment, but all right. the, the correct answer is which one? <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't remember making that comment, but okay, thank you. <laughs> we say a lot of stupid shit on this podcast. I like um, to say that uh, stupid shit is the number one export of the country hodgepodge house. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like when we were driving downtown last week, and I, there was just like the freight. The cargo boat or whatever, the thing. Barge. Barge. That Most one. people call them barges. I can't think of words. I'm tired. Um, but The boat truck. It was like It was like on the side of the river, and I said, oh, crashed R&P, R.I.P., and we bolted the cross <laughs> at the same time, and I was just like, we've been living together too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just love that. R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, Mike Ryan, uh, if you haven't heard him before, I know he's probably well, – if you're from Texas, you've heard him because he has number one hits in Texas. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the rewrites in the top 10 right now. Yeah. The thing that, that blows my mind with him is that when I listen to his music and I think about his music, it it is 100% of the contemporary genre. Like it, it's, contem- quote, contemporary it's contemporary country. country yeah. I'm not you trying to make that sound bad or anything. But yeah. like the, he makes the kind of music that should do well on the radio and i don't know why it's yeah. not because when you listen to it like if you listen to a like a a, a catchy mike ryan songs like say bad reputation for example yeah. there are people who have terrible taste in music who will recognize the goodness in that song yeah and they will enjoy it and i don't understand why it doesn't do well or i guess i don't know why it's just know. not available on the radio yeah, i don't know maybe I'll, he doesn't promote it up here it could and... it could be but i just i always think about that and i'm like no this dude's sound like he he's got the sound that like who's gonna listen to yeah. it and be like no it's like not, it doesn't make any sense it's so universally acceptable he's not like super honky tonky and yodeling that'll alienate 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 the the non traditional or the yeah the non traditional folk and it's also yeah. not so contemporary that he's gonna alienate all of the contemporary folks yeah. like it's, he's it, not about he, to take stage with Thomas Red like, exactly he hits he, he hits this good groove of sound that is clearly country but also very you know accessible and yeah. recognizable and i'm like man this this dude should be fucking huge yeah i don't yeah and his voice is and just, he's such a good he singer it's tremendous it <laughs> yeah he's one of those dudes like when you try to sing along you're just like oh man i'm bad at singing yeah there yeah like i have a i have a decent voice i've sang on stage before but him i just i can't hit the notes in half his songs oh, God. and it's just like yeah i i, I like I realize, sad song i cannot sing on i song. have a i have a little i have a range that I have to stay in if I'm going to sing, he is all out of it. Yeah. No chance. <laughs> yeah, he is absolutely fantastic. He, uh, yeah, his voice is so good. Yeah. 